Esperesas. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Our society is pleased to be presenting tonight what has become one of our long-standing quasi-annual traditions, our poetry evening. Uh, have you realized that this is the 10th poetry event of the Hellenic Professional Society since the tradition started with a memorable event on the poet Kavafi in 1999? Our thanks go to Alice Karamaridis on the extreme right and his team, Katrina Kodoyorgaki, and right behind me, Dimitris Varvarezos, for making this event and including tonight's to make it possible. Uh, briefly, after exploring the various facets of modern Greek poetry from the merely famous Kavafi and Palamas to the Nobel celebrated Seferis and Elitis, from the marine Cavadias to the ideologically committed Varnalis, from the Byzantine roots of modern Greece to the postmodern generations of the late 20th century, now comes the time to draw our attention to a bit noir of modern Greek literature, Karyotakis. By modern, we mean in the tens and the early twenties of uh, the twentieth century. His somber words have given ample poetic and musical inspiration in Greece in modern years. So let's welcome Alex, Dimitri and Katerina, who will help us appreciate this poetic and musical tradition perhaps an apt one for the difficult times that Greece is once again going through, as it did during the time of Karyotakis. So after the uh, presentation, please remain behind. We have a reception in the same hall. Thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, Kostas Karyotakis is quite a challenge. Easily the briefest major presence in modern Greek literature, he took his own life at the age of 32 in the late 1920s after only three published collections. Altogether, his poetic work comprises a grand total of fewer than 100 mostly short poems including the three unpublished poems found on his desk after his death at the sleepy western Greek town of Preveza in the summer of 1928. Moreover, his poems, although noteworthy, are not stylistically memorable in the way the poems of Kavafi or Ritsos or Palamas are. <clears throat> Nevertheless, Karyotakis, through his poems, has gained increasing recognition and popularity in the decades after his death. More remarkably, from the 70s and onwards, his poems have inspired increasing numbers of offbeat and mainstream composers and music groups in Greece. So what's going on here? Why Karyotakis? Kostas Karyotakis was born on October 30, 1896, at the town of Tripoli in the Peloponnese, to a politically conservative upper middle class family. His father, Georgios, was a public works engineer, Nomomichanikos, working for the Hellenic state on infrastructure projects around the country. As a result, the family moved on frequently within Greece to places like Lefkada, Argostoli, Larissa, Kalamata, Patra. Kostas was an intelligent, playful child that enjoyed farces and pranks. The years of the Balkan Wars, 1912 and 1913, find him as a teenager with his family at Chania, the capital of the newly liberated island of Crete, where he falls in love with Anna Scordili, a local girl from a good family with whom he'd maintained a platonic friendship for several years. After Chania, as the world descends into the First World War, Karyotakis begins to live on his own in Athens as a student at the law school of the University of Athens, where he gets his law degree with honors in late 1917. Meanwhile, since the age of 16, he begins to send off poems to youth magazines and later newspapers, including the eternal Acropolis, where his two poems published in 1915 when he was 19 years old, receive favorable acclaim from the newspaper's famous editor, the father of modern Greek journalism, Vlasis Gavrilidis. 
An avid teenage reader of 19th century French erotic novels, he masters the French and German languages. The years, of course, are tumultuous for Greece, and everybody is affected. His father gets dismissed from the public works as non-supporter of Venizelos, although he is reinstated a year later. Greece enters the war. Karyotakis gets drafted upon graduation. But then he enrolls in the philosophy department at the university, which results in, his post in the postponement of his service. He never finishes these studies, and as for the military service, he eventually gets dismissed due to health reasons. Here is a poem written during that time, in 1919, and published anonymously at Numas, the best-known progressive literary magazine of Greece at the time, which reveals Karyotakis's perspectives regarding Greece's military adventures. Ο Μιχαλιός. Το Μιχαλιό το πήρανε στρατιώτη. Καμαρατάξε εκείνησε και ωραία. Με το Μαρί και με τον Παναγιώτη. Δεν μπόρεσε να μάθει καν το επόμενο. Όλε μουρμούριζε, κύριε Δεκανέα, άσε με να γυρίσω στο χωριό μου. Τον άλλο χρόνο, στο νοσοκομείο, αμήλυτο τον ουρανό κοιτούσε. Εκάφωνε πέρα, σε ένα σημείο, το βλέμμα του, νοσταλγικό και πράο, σαν άλεγε, σαν να παρακαλούσε. Αφήστε με στο σπίτι μου να πάω. Και ο Μιχαλιός επέθανε στρατιώτης. Τον ξεπροβόδησαν κάτι φαντάρι. Μαζί του ο Μαρίς και ο Παναγιώτης. Απάνω τους σκεπάστηκε ο Λάκος. Μα το άφησαν απ' έξω το ποδάρι. Ήταν λίγο μακρύς ο Φουκαράκος. This is quite a remarkable poem. No traces of heroism, patriotism, or devotion to an ideology, to a cause. Just three vignettes of the very human and personal aspects in the life of the soldier, framed by the strong undercurrent of the futility and insignificance of the entire undertaking. The year 1919 is the most formative in Karyotakis' short life. Armed with his law degree, he tries to look for clients as a lawyer, but without success. So, he quickly turns to an effort to monetize his poetry. First step, he publishes in February the first of his three poetic collections, Oponos to Anthropu ke ton Pragmaton, The Pain of the Human Being and of Things. This collection by the 22-year-old Karyotakis consists of 10 dark and difficult poems. These poems bring to mind intensely today's emo style of rock music and fashion, the style that embodies most clearly the artist's shift from extroverted rage to internal turmoil. Here is the very first poem from Karyotakis's first collection. Thanati. Είναι άνθρωποι που την κακή ώρα την έχουν μέσα τους. Χεράκια που κρατώντα τα τριαντάφυλλα και απ' τη χαρά ζεστά των φιλημάτων. Χεράκια που κρατώντα τα τριαντάφυλλα χτυπήσατε τις πόρτες των θανάτων. Ματάκια μου που κάτι το εδιψάσατε και διψασμένα εμείνατε ποτήρια. Ματάκια μου που κάτι το εδιψάσατε και μείνατε κλεισμένα παραθύρια. Όπου είχατε πολλά να υπείτε στόματα και ο λόγος σας εδιάλεξε για τάφο. Ω, που είχατε πολλά να υπείτε στόματα και τον καημό δεν είπατε που γράφω. Μάτια, χεράκια, στόματα, ιστορίστε μου τον πόνο κάποιας ώρας, κάποιου τόπου. Μάτια, χεράκια, στόματα, ιστορίστε μου τον πόνο των πραγμάτων και του ανθρώπου. As one would have predicted for a time in which Greece was consumed by a frenzy of political and patriotic endeavors, these poems were not well received. 
Nevertheless, Karyotakis persists in his publishing efforts, including with the above-mentioned magazine Numas, which eventually awards him a prize for a children's poem later in the year. In parallel, he gangs up with another young poet, Agis Levendis, and they start publishing, in September of 1919, the satirical magazine Igamba, the leg, a word which actually in Greek has strong connotations with a female leg. The weekly magazine is apparently off to a strong start in part because of its slightly provocative and racy content. This, of course, makes it easy for established competitors to bring its contents to the attention of authorities and so to effect its closure in October of 1919 after the publication of only six issues to the chagrin of our itinerant editor poet. To round off his whirlwind year, a month later, Karyotakis finds himself with a new job, with a Greek public service, as a high-ranking employee of the Ministry of the Interior at the prefecture of Thessaloniki, the most important city of northern Greece, and close to his parents, who have been stationed there after his father's reinstatement with the public works service. A year later, he is transferred to the prefecture of Arta in western Greece, where he acts briefly as prefecture director, Ekteli Hrei Nomarchi. In parallel, he starts writing prose short stories, such as The Skull, to Kafkalo. He also writes a satirical play, Pell Mell, the title, of course, evocative of the cabaret-laden district in London. The play, never staged, was written together with his friend, Harilaos Sakelariadis, who published Karyotakis' complete works ten years after the poet's death. Eventually, in the summer of 1921, a year before the burning and catastrophe of the city of Smyrna in Asia Minor, Karyotakis publishes in Athens his second collection of poems, Nepenthe, Nipenthi. The title evokes the old world word Nipenthes, no passion, no mourning, from Homer's Odyssey. This describes a plant-derived drug that changes the mood and makes its takers forget their sorrows and angers. This drug was mentioned in the Odyssey as given to Helen by an Egyptian. Karyotakis, who likely begins to experiment with drugs at this time, brings to his work another famous literary drug habitué, the giant of 19th century French poetry, Charles Baudelaire. Baudelaire calls opium pharmacon nipenthes in his poetry. Here's an excerpt of a passage from Baudelaire beautifully rendered in Greek by Karyotakis for the introduction to Nepenthe. Από τότε κρατάει αυτό που μπορεί αλίμονο να υποθεί η πληγή μου και πεπρωμένο μου. Πίσω από τις κοινοθεσίε της αμπεράντου υπάρξεως, στο μελανότερο της αβίσου, βλέπω καθαρά κόσμους παράξενους και θύμα εκστατικό της οξυδέρκειάς μου, σέρνω φίδια που μου δαγκάνουν τα πόδια. Και από εκείνο τον καιρό αγαπώ τόσο τρυφερά, καθώς οι προφήτες την έρημο και τη θάλασσα. Γελώ στα πένθη, κλαίω στις γιορτές. Βρίσκω μια γεύση γλυκιά στο πικρό κρασί. Νομίζω πολλές φορές για ψέματα τις αλήθειες. Και με μάτια στον ουρανό πέφτω σε γκρεμού. Αλλά η φωνή με παρηγορεί και λέει. Κράτησε τα όνειρά σου, οι συνετοί δεν έχουν έτσι ωραία σαν τους τρελούς. Nepenthe, 